Hey guys, welcome to my April 1st DVD update, where I talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the past, I think it's been two and a half weeks for this one. The first one I got is A Lonely Place to Die. And this has Melissa George. She's been in a lot of movies, but I always remember her from that movie Triangle with her on the boat and things keep happening again and again. That was a, that was a kind of good movie, Triangle. This movie was really cool, though. It was about a group of mountain climbers and... Um, the mountain climbing sequences in this were really well done. Like it was like some of the best of that kind of stuff I've seen in a long time. I, and a lot of it looked like it was real, like they must have had doubles doing some of it. I wish they had like a documentary or something on, you know, the making of that kind of stuff. Because I would like to have seen how they did a lot of that. Because a lot of it really did look like, you know, real stuff. But the um, basic idea was they're out there, um, a group of friends out there climbing the mountains and stuff. And they're out in one area in the woods and they hear the sound and it ends up being this girl. And they end up finding this girl who was buried underground with like a pipe out of the ground. And they end up, you know, saving her from being buried down there. And it turns out, you know, she's there because of certain reasons. I don't, I don't want to talk about all the points of it, but basically the, re the people that put her there are after them. And it's very well done. There's some really cool sequences, too, in a parade. And I don't know, this was a really pretty good one. Like I said, too, for, for the climbing sequences and that kind of stuff, too, very well done stuff. And I'm sure a lot of it was green screen and things like that, but it really looked pretty good. Definitely is one that I really did like. The next one, this is the Jonah Hill one, The Sitter. And it's basically like if you've seen Adventures in Babysitting. It's very, very similar to that style movie, but done, you know, real raunchy and R-rated. And the basic idea is he basically ends up getting stuck babysitting these kids to help his mom out or something like that. And all these situations happen along the way while he's with the kids. Like I said, very similar to Adventures in Babysitting. Not an amazing movie, but I thought it was pretty funny. I usually like Jonah Hill's movies for the most part. Um, I thought, you know, 21 Jump Street was really pretty good for the skinny Joan Hill. But, I don't know, I definitely thought it was funny. Nothing outstanding, though. But if you've seen Adventures in Babysitting, you like that kind of movie. Very, very similar. And, of course, I have to get the Muppets... Sorry, to have a new sort of set over here. I got the new Muppets movie. And I had, they had, like, another one with, like, um, the soundtrack. I didn't care about all that. But the basic idea with this was it's um, Jason Siegel and... Um, Amy Adams characters and they're going to get married and they're going to Hollywood to see the Muppets and see all the things there and they have having to bring along his, you know, Jason Siegel's friend who's a Muppet. And it's an interesting concept the way the thing is done. I didn't like it as much as I like some of the old Muppet movies. It was a little different. Um, a little, I don't know. I thought it was pretty good though. But, and it, st it did like the original movies did too and have a lot of cameos and have that same kind of vibe to it. Definitely is worth seeing if you like the Muppets. For some reason, though, I always liked um, the Sesame Street movie, Follow That Bird, the best of all of them. Because John Candy was in that one. And I don't know, for some reason, that was always, like, my favorite of all those things. Um, I don't know why. It always was, though. And I got the next season of South Park. And I've got to get some of the other seasons. I got kind of behind with these. The current season of South Park has been very good. It's been a lot of... See, everything's falling. It's been a lot of sort of one-note kind of plots, the new season. But, I don't know, some of them have been really funny. Um, this was a pretty good season, too. And it has a documentary, which I really like, Six Days to Air. Which is definitely, if you want to see, like, the whole process of how they make the show. You know, and they have basically six days, they do the whole thing. And, you know, unlike, you know, The Simpsons and things like that, th this show is made a week before it airs. It's not done months before and then set off to animators. So it is pretty cool how last minute with this show they can add anything they want up until like a day before they air it. Sometimes up until hours, which is really pretty amazing that they can do things like that. I think that's pretty cool. The next one is an exclusive set to Best Buy. And I've seen people like selling it for like 30 bucks on Amazon. Don't get it. It's only $12 at, um, at Best Buy. And it's the um, exclusive version. And this version, too, apparently they're saying is the harder to find one with the cover. Um, and I'm sure in a couple months this will be everywhere. And I really did like the first Ring movie. I remember it was like one of the first, um, you know, back when it first came out, like I think 2002, it was one of the first like creepy PG 13 horror movies I'd seen in a long time. 
And, you know, the basic idea was, you know, if you watch the tape, this girl comes for you out of the TV. And, you know, it's been spoofed so many times. And they made The Ring 2. The Ring 2, um, you know, remake this, uh, the sequel to this, did not like that one very much at all. There was only a few cool sequences, like with, like, the overly white, saturated scenes and a few of that that I liked. This one, though, really is pretty creepy. And Brian Cox is in it, and he plays a really cool part. I don't know. I always liked this one. I remember really liking it when it first came out. It's hard to believe that it's now 10 years old. But this is definitely one, if you, and though, like I said, don't get it on Amazon for overpriced. Get it at Best Buy or Best Buy. I think you can get it on BestBuy.com. The next one, now this is a bad movie, but, you know, I'm a huge Hills Have Eyes fan in the first movie. really like Michael Berryman, so I had to get it. Um, and it's The Hills Have Eyes 2. And, you know, this is as bad as I remember when I first saw it years ago, when the DVD came out like 10 or 11 years ago. It's pretty bad. I know Wes Craven pretty much disowned this movie because he made this because he really needed money at the time. And you can tell, compared to his other movies, this really did feel really thrown together. Like, there's not much... It's Everything is kind of just sort of filmed like who gives a shit. It has that kind of feel to it. You know, there are a couple cool sequences in it. You know, kind of interesting seeing like some of the bike scenes and things like that. But it really is pretty weird. And there's really only two killers, unlike the original one, which they were all kind of communicating with walkie-talkies all over the place. And that kind of stuff, it was just the whole idea of this one just sort of seemed stupid. It sort of seemed like they really could have gotten away. And things like that it just didn't work too well. The next one... And, I, and this is the movie that a lot of people are saying Hunger Games is a copy of. And so I think Hunger Games is a similar idea, but not not exactly the same. And it's Battle Royale. And I know there's the other set with the, um, the I think, theatrical cut and the second movie. I really didn't like the second movie. I remember bought, getting a, I think it was a VCD of it or something, at a convention like years back. This movie, I think, is from like 2000. Something like that. It's been a long time. Yeah, 2000. It's been done, made for a long time. But um, this is a pretty good one. I really did like it. It's basically about a group of these kids that are on a trip and they end up with these th waking up with these things on their neck and they're forced to fight and kill each other. And Hunger Games is kind of done PG-13. This is done like NC-17, real gory. And this is definitely one really creepy, weird concept. I definitely like this one a lot. Now, in the, the video I did showing the um, zombie movies I had, everyone said I didn't show Shaun of the Dead. And I had a DVD, um, but I just got the Blu-ray of it. So I do have it, and I did like it, and I regretted not showing it in the up update because I got so many messages about it. I know, you know, even it starts with, has my name, even though I spell my name S-H-A-W-N. Um, this is a really good one, though, and I do regret not showing it in the zombie collection video. And, of course, I got... Um, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo remake. And I have not watched the original ones. I do need to watch it at some point. My dad watched the original and said he didn't like it too much. I really like this one. It was very stylized. I really like the um, casting in this. And there's one specific song, too, that you're never going to think of the same again after you watch this movie. But this is really is really is def definitely worth watching. You know, a lot of people that like the, the original said so they don't want to watch this. I don't know. David Fincher really has really never done a really bad movie. Everything, even if it's not an amazing movie, it's still pretty good. This I definitely would recommend. Now, this was a pain in the ass. I had to buy this again. Um, when I moved, and this has been about almost two years, like a year and a half ago, I moved. And I just thought, oh, yeah, I want to watch these again. I was going to um, watch them because I saw Vern Troy on that celebrity house hunting show. So I'm like, oh, I want to watch the Austin Powers movies again. So I go and look in the Blu-rays. Can't find it. Then I'm like, what happened to it? You know, the only person ever in that DVD room is like nobody. And so I look back at um, a video from when I first moved showing the collection. It wasn't there. So somehow in the move it went missing or somehow before the move it went missing. I don't know, maybe somebody who's watched all my videos can pinpoint the exact moment it went missing, because I don't know. But I had to rebuy the Austin Powers collection. And it was just, you know, this is like one of the first times I had something go missing. Then I realized another movie in the A section went missing. American Pie Book of Love, which I'm not in a rush to buy that again. All I can say is thank God this wasn't out of print and like a hundred bucks or something, because I've had that happen with things that I didn't get in the past or things I got rid of and things like that. 
But, you know, I love the Austin Powers films. I don't know what the hell happened to it, though. I'm, like I said, this is one of the first times that things like this have ever happened with DVDs. So I usually know exactly where everything is. Now, I got some titles from um, Shop Factory sent to me. And the first one is from the guys that did, you know, from Synthetic Cinema, who I was in two of their movies, the past films Banshee, at the end of Banshee, and Assault the Sasquatch. And I'm throughout that movie. And if you haven't seen Assault the Sasquatch, watch that on um, Netflix. It's on Netflix streaming now. And it's been on there for about a year now. And I think it's going to be on there for quite a, like a year or two more. So if you haven't seen that, though, check that out. It's called Assault of the Sasquatch. And this one is called Alien Opponent. And um, the basic idea of this one is it starts with this one woman and, and her wife. I mean, her, and her husband, sorry, and her husband. The husband's a way older guy. He's a real turd. And he's out there with his friends, like, you know, th throwing all these orders at her, telling her to do all this stuff. And basically, she's cheating on him with the guy who works on the farm. And he ends up, you know, stumbling out and seeing what's going on. And um, he's, like, beating up on her. And then his, her mother kills him with a hammer. At the same time all this is happening, a alien ship lands. And um, it's this creature thing in this cool space suit. And basically, they can't end up getting the insurance money from the... Uh, you know, husband that they killed, they're basically trying to pass it off like the alien killed him. And because the alien killed all the husband's friends, and basically the, um, the husband's body went missing. So the alien took it or something happened, and they have to find it in order to get all the insurance money because he had a huge insurance um, thing taken out. So basically they have it make a commercial for, say, anyone that can come to our um, land and find it, will get $100,000 and they have to find the body and kill the alien. So all these people come from all over the area, you know, different areas, different types of groups of people to try and kill this alien. And Rowdy Roddy Piper is in it. And he's great in the movie. He's, you know, from They Live, you know, I'm here to chew bubblegum, kick ass. This is definitely one to, work, to check out, though. Like I said, too, if you haven't seen Sasquatch, check that out, too. The next one I got is from them as well, from the Shout Factory. And it's the Roger Corman cult classics, um, the Nurses Collection. Now, there's also, there's been many types of collections of types of movies in the past. You know, it's, you know these similar kind of movies. There's been the stewardess movies. There's been the cheerleader movies. And then there's the nurse movies. And I don't know how many more they made of these, like if other companies produced them or not. But these are the Roger Corman ones. And the one on here, um, I think it's the Candy Stripe Nurses one. Now, I was watching it, I was like, I know that guy from something. And I, like, I knew him right away. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is from the 70s and he's old, but he was old in Home Alone. But I'm like, no, it's the cool old guy from Home Alone who was like, she's got her own jewelry and her own this. And he was also in Chairman of the Board and he's been, he was in everything. I think he recently passed away, but he was a great character actor who always played cool old guys. And he's in that. And the documentary in here, too, basically talks about the anatomy of a nurse film and how it's three different, always three girls, and they all have different, you know, characteristics of, you know, basically branches off into three different stories and talks about how all the movies always have the one girl doing this, the one girl doing that, the one girl doing that. These are interesting. If you like these kind of movies, grindhouse style things, these are definitely ones to check out. Now, they sent me this, too, and... I don't know anything about X-Men. I really haven't seen X-Men since, like, 93. So I don't know a whole lot about them. But this is called, um... Astonishing X-Men Dangerous. And I think this is part of our three, um, series. And this one, um, Joss Whedon and, um... I think Joss Whedon, I think he's the... Buffy the Vampire Slayer guy is the guy who's produced these. And, you know, I looked at some of it. It's pretty cool, cool artwork and things like that. But like I said, I can't say anything about it. I don't know anything about X-Men. And if I tried to explain it, it would go horribly wrong. The next one I got, and I love this show. And I love, um, I think I like it as much as Little Britain. Not as, not, not, I don't know. I think similar. And it's Come Fly With Me. And I think in England there's a Blu-ray of it. But I don't know if it's region free. I, that's one thing that sucks is when they, you know, put out only the DVD of, like, An Idiot Abroad and things like that in America. But this is fun. It's basically them playing all the characters but in a airplane airport. And it's similar to that show Airline. And there was two versions of that. The um, American one was following Southwest Airlines. Then they had one in England following around the airlines there. 
But Stan was playing all these characters and all the kinds of issues that happen along the way. And it's really pretty funny. I definitely, if you like Little Britain, I know too the, uh, I think Matt Lucas is on Britain's Got Talent, which I wish they'd air that in America. I'm going to have to, like, you know, get the, I don't even know if they're going to put out a DVD of it or not. And I have to, you know, bring it in or something. But I, I, I've watched some of it online, and it's pretty cool as seeing him as a host. The next one, now this is an amazing movie. Bless the Beast and the Children. And this is a burn on demand um, from Columbia. I got it on Amazon. And, um, you know, it was a little bit expensive. The burn on demand ones are usually pretty high. But um, there's also a burn on demand of Savage Bees. And I don't know if it's um, the same, if it's good quality or not. This was actually in widescreen, too. I, I didn't, for some reason, I thought it was a TV movie. I don't think it was. I think it was a theatrical film. But the movie's basically about group of these kids at camp and they're kind of the misfits and everybody's giving them shit and things like that and they end up seeing these buffalo on a trip that basically which is really horrible what they do and I don't know if this still goes on now but it's really hard to watch the sequence with the buffalo getting killed really hard like it's almost better to fast forward it but it's it's just sad it really is but basically people pay money to shoot all these buffalo and it's basically the kids can't stand it and it upsets them so much they go and you know when they get back to camp that night they go and leave on their own to try and you know let all the buffalo free because they can't you know stand to see this going on so basically they're on this journey and you know basically all they basically discover themselves along the way and it's really cool sequences of them in like these towns and really amazing cinematography it would look really good on blu-ray i guess there's probably never going to be one though but it's billy mummy from lost in space and he's really good in this this is, i can't recommend this one enough this is so well done i really really like this one now i found um this eight movie pack which is another one that's sim difficult to find but you know these have all been released and i have two of them and it's the eight films to die for after dark set. It's a pain in the ass though, because I remember spending, you know, fifteen twenty dollars a piece for the movies when they first came out. And I don't know if they're going to release all the sets like this or not. The best one on here though is Autopsy, and that was the one. I think that was the one in the jail. I can't remember exactly, but I remember that was the one I really liked. But this is a good set for five dollars. I don't. I don't have. Any of them, I think, except Autopsy and like one other one. The next one, I ended up ordering this online. It's the Horror Collection. And I got this mainly for the Blood Diner. And it also has Parents in widescreen. I think the old Pioneer DVD I had of Parents was not in widescreen. I think um, there was an Anchor Bay one, which was a double movie set with, I think, Fear or something like that. And I, someone said that was widescreen, though. But um, this for Blood Diner in widescreen as well is definitely worth it, and it's the uncut version. But this is a good set. Showdown, those people have been asking me if it's in um, widescreen. No, that's in full screen. I've never seen Showdown. The cover makes it look like it's a new movie, but it's actually something from the 80s. No, from 1990. This is a good set, though. It only has six movies, but um, if you can find it, it's definitely one of the harder-to-find ones. And if anyone finds any other of these hearts, that's let me know. I'm trying to figure out how many of them there are. The next one I got, I saw this on, on the TV, and then it was only like $3 used, and this was a really good movie, called um, The Switch, and not the Jennifer Aniston one. This is from the, what was this, from 1991. And it's basically, it starts off with this guy who's kind of a womanizer, and he's basically in the hot tub with all these women, and they end up drowning him. And he ends up going to, I guess, Purgatory and... He's basically going like going to either get sent to heaven or hell, but they basically send him back to Earth, and he has to find one woman that actually liked him, and he gets sent back as a woman, and he has to find someone that loves him, and it's a pretty good one, really pretty good. Jimmy Smith's is in it, and he was really good in this, and I don't know at the end like it's real sad, and like there's some sad stuff in it. I I can't recommend this enough. I really like this. It had really good opening music too. This is what really good kind of movie they don't make anymore. Now, the last ones I got were Creature, and I just got this, but I was like, what the hell? It wasn't a very good movie, but it was $10, and I'm like, yeah, they're not even going to put a Blu-ray out of it. But, I don't know. And <laughs> the last one I got was for $5 in the $5 bin, and this is a good set. I watched um, the two main ones I got it for, Pure Luck 
And Pure Luck was um, by this girl that goes to, and she's real, you know, always getting into trouble and always falling down and getting lost and things like that. She's in Mexico and ends up getting kidnapped, and no one knows where she is. No one knows what happened. So her father, who is like really rich and runs his company, ends up um, hiring um, Danny Glover's character, and he can't find him. So then. The, they basically come up with the idea of having Martin Short, who's just as clumsy as she is, so him and Danny Glover go to Mexico and try and hope that Martin Short gets into all the same kind of issues that she did, and since they're very similar personality types with issues happening, maybe he can find her. And it was really good. The other one was King Ralph, which I saw years back, and it's um the... A whole entire royal family ends up getting electrocuted when they take a picture because the they're on metal bleachers and it just rains. So basically, the um, bleachers are in like a puddle of water and the um, plug gets plugged in, so they all get electrocuted and die. And they have to find anyone they can that's related in blood to the royal family. And the only person they can find is John Goodman's character, who's this guy, it's real slobbish, and you know works in Vegas at these casinos is like a lounge singer and he ends up having to become the king and all the issues that come along with it. That's a really good one. Um, Rich or Poor is a fun movie. Not amazing, but I liked it. And Ghost Dad, I haven't watched that in a long time, but that was pretty good. Anyway though, thanks a lot for watching and for subscribing and I'll see you guys later.